Moving on, we've got this other clip here, Kirsty the Fire the Kids subreddit once again, because I refuse to watch this entire show in full. It features Crystalia and Brian Callen on Crystalia's podcast, Lifeline, which is funny because I could have guessed, I could have sworn Bren, Brian Callen said him and Crystalia aren't friends. I could have sworn he said they barely hung out. And you know what? I'm going to play one of those videos because there was one particular one where he started going to the camera. I'm saying I don't. And he started doing that weird thing where he kind of over enunciates. Let me see if I can find it. It's Brian Kellen talking about Chris D'Elia and basically responding to the haters out there who are basically saying that he threw him under the bus. Let's see if we can get this stuff up here before we play that one. Brian Kellen, um, Chris D'Elia. Let's see if I can get it. Let's see. Uh, let's <laughs> chase cow. You did what you for, bruh. Come on, man. That sh I saw that. I was like, excuse me. Let's see if it said response. Uh, look at that. I thought they weren't friends anymore. This is Chris Aaliyah heckling Brian Callan on stage. They're not friends. Funny. Never hung out with each other anymore. Well, Sasa's never around. Where is it? There's one where he says like, oh, he says something. He's like, he's talking about it. He says, oh, I didn't say this. What did he say? He's responded to something. Brian Callan did. Can I find it? Is it here? Liar, nope. It's not this one, is it? It can't be that one. Brian Callan responds. Is that the one, maybe? Two years ago? No, that's when he responded on the podcast, isn't it? Fuck, it's the one where he's, like, standing. No, he's, I think it's the one where he's on, like, the Conspiracy Social Club. Also, he speaks about him. Let's see if I can find it here. Where is it? He speaks about him on the Conspiracy Social Club. Oh, I don't have it here, do I? This is this is a myth. This is a myth. I definitely thought I imagined it, but I don't remember if that is true. He said something like, um, oh, is it under bus? Let's see if it's under bus. Did I say under, is, maybe it's one of the titles of my videos. Oh, it is, isn't it? It's one of the titles of my videos. Okay, the clip is here, but it's in one of my videos. Redacted if I play my own clip on here, to be honest. Let's not do that. Um, has someone got the clip itself? Okay, they don't. But anyway, trust me, believe me. If you want to see the original clip, it's there. I, I talked about it two years ago. Chris Lear explains why he threw Chris. Brian Kelly explains why he threw Chris Lear under the bus. You can check out if you want. But we're not going to do that, right? Because I'm not redacted enough to play a clip of myself watching myself on stream. Not that kind of guy. So we're going to jump on and actually look at the clip that itself that somebody uploaded gracefully on the Final Kiss subreddit of the best bit of the show itself and see how these guys that were formerly friends and not friends anymore got on with each other. So let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I, I noticed I had this like little script. Scra you see the scrape right there? That looks like it's uh, going to lead to something. Just a little, a, a little scrape right yeah, there. Yeah, but right? that's how it starts. But you see it, right? Yeah. Okay, a little red right there. Yeah. I'm, 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 I, I, I'm like, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's, it's like this, and it's been like that for a long time. Yeah. It's a wound that won't heal. So, yeah. So I go to the. <clears throat> I was actually at the doctor for something else, and I was like, "What is this? This won't get worse." He's like, "I don't know. Just keep tra tabs, tabs on it." So like, all right. Weeks later, months later, I'm back at the doctor for something else. I ask, you know. I say, what is this? And he's like, yeah, it's there. It's okay, probably. It's just a red thing. You, you figure it out. And I'm like, okay. Uh, but I'm kind of worried about it because it's been so long that it's been there. And I, so I really start to think about like, how, what is it? Why does this, why, why is this here? Yeah. Because it's not there for no reason, right? right. So, so I'm like, all right, I'm trying to keep tags of what I'm doing every day. That's that, keeping that, it, that's that's, keeping that's it keeping like that. That's keeping it like this. So I noticed the only thing that I do when I keep it like this is the only thing I do is when I go into my yep. jeans, right? So I'm like, okay, well, it's got to be something there. So I started to really pay attention when I go to my keys, whatever this, and then I, 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 I notice that when I go for my keys or whatever it is, when I go for my wallet, whatever it is, that's when I do feel something, okay? And I, I'm so like, I think it's just one pair of jeans. So I take the jeans off. I look at the jeans. There's nothing there. And then I put on other jeans hmm. and then I keep noticing it's happening with the other jeans too so now i'm like is something up with my hand the way it goes into my jeans or whatever like that uh -huh. every pair of jeans i wear i'm doing like this okay so i i look at every pair of jeans there's nothing there uh -huh. and then it's nothing here uh -huh. i go i try medicine nothing's really helping it i wear jeans every day uh -huh. so i'm finally like dude i'm losing my mind okay calvin has a little like um uh, has a like a science kit 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, maybe if I grab the magnifying glass, I'm going to look at the genes in that way because something's got to be up with these genes. Yeah. Okay. So I grab the mic, the, 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 what do you call it? The magnifying, magnifying glass. glass. And I look at these genes mm-hmm. and, and I'm, I'm looking at studying it and I see this very, 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 very extremely tiny diving board. And I'm like, what? And then I realize, oh, it's because my pockets stay deep. Right? Yeah, I don't know, man. I feel I wasted two minutes of my life there. Maybe this stuff hit better when you didn't know this guy was, you know, branding women with his initials, right? And coaxing, you know, somewhat barely underage girls to come over to his hotel room and the other guy wasn't accused of rape and you know pulling out his winker in the girl's car and chasing self assistance around the shop showing him his tighty whities allegedly maybe the stuff would have hit better but there's something about this type of humor that worked well when you didn't know about their sordid details unfortunately once you know more about these guys it just doesn't hit the same it's just what it is but maybe we have to question ourselves also don't put the blame on these guys because is because can you sit there and honestly say Chris Alia's comedy has changed any way, shape, or form, or his sense of humor since he got cancelled or got accused of what he got accused of? He's the same guy. So if I laughed at his stuff and I found him funny, and you laughed at his stuff and you found him funny, we have to give ourselves a real L. We have to give ourselves the L because maybe he was never funny in the first place. And we just had really bad taste, or we were just incredibly redacted in some way, shape or form, that we thought his brand of comedy was funny. Because I'm not too sure, because I think I can't be too harsh on the guy because he did make me laugh a lot of times when I used to watch The Fire and the Kid. And a lot of his appearances on there, especially with Will Sasso, especially with Brian, when they kind of recreated a 10 minute pod, was awesome. And I laughed a lot of what they had to say. But it just doesn't hit the same anymore. And I saw the guy live perform. Like I said, previous times I went to the, you know, laugh factory notes. Yeah. Many years ago when I went to LA and I didn't think he was funny in terms of stand up, but I actually saw him perform live and he was really good. And I'm not really a fan of his stand up. I think all these specials are pretty shit. I hate that weird, you know, voice he puts on like a kid and the weird kind of physical comedy stuff he does. It's just corny to me. So I'm not really too sure if it's him being bad at comedy or if it's me be having bad taste or if it's me growing up or if it's me realizing it's kind of hard to laugh at somebody who essentially has been accused of, you know, coaxing women to come to his hotel room at all times and having them on some sort of weird sexual retainer. It's hard to find that guy hilarious in that kind of funny, silly goosey way because he's not a silly goose. He's kind of very serious kind of a bit demented and maybe a little bit evil so is it easy it's not easy to laugh at what he does and the jokes that he makes even more so when these type of two and these type of guys especially with this weird friendship they have but maybe i'm wrong maybe i got i got diving i got diving boards on my jeans right above my because my pockets run deep you know just, that nuts too long a story to get to that and i want my time back i have i have to be on a plane tonight i can't i'm busy man i can't i'm i want an adult conversation <laughs> this stupid timing board yeah fuck dude so, all right. Was, yeah, I have to carry my money around in a backpack or something. Don't use cash. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say, right? If I was Chris D'Elia, I would kind of hate Brian Kellen if what we saw online was true. Because, the, you know, poetic flipping justice, right? Chris Alia gets cancelled for being a diddler. He plays a diddler on fucking you on Netflix. He gets accused of being a diddler. 
and everyone in comedy acts surprised when really and truly they all knew he was a diddler because they all used to make jokes about the amount of girls he'd have at shows, the fact that some of them looked barely legal, bloody blah, blah, blah. It was a running joke about Chris Lear being one of the only comics in that scene who basically had a large contingent of young girls that used to hang around him. So the fact that some of his closest friends were acting surprised and were being shocked and trying to, you know, virtue signal online was silly. So he gets cancelled, everything happens, and then you'd think, okay, cool. Maybe the ones who are more commercially minded, who don't know him that well, need to do what they need to do to publicly disavow him to save their careers and to make sure they don't get pulled down with him. But you'd think someone like a Brian Cannon who's been there with him since the 10-minute podcast days, they've been friends for a long time, they clearly get each other's humour, they're clearly still those two older guys who clearly are always looking to hook up with flipping fans at shows, even in their fucking 40s or 60s in terms of, you know, Brian Cannon's age. They're clearly still active in that regards. Their dicks probably still get hard in that regards. To think that they didn't know about each other's escapades on the road is absolutely non I, I don't believe it in the slightest it may happen but i don't believe it so imagine you're chris Delia and you get cancelled and then brian kellen comes on his show and basically says hey i don't know you i don't know the guy we barely toured we were hardly really friends really we only saw each other when we do podcasts we never had dinner ever not once in our his in our time together as friends and i don't know nothing then the next week kellen gets cancelled for, for for maybe a comparable crime. Maybe you could say diddling and rape are the same category. Maybe if you believe he raped as well, but whatever. Brian Cannon gets up getting cancelled. If I'm Chris D'Elia and I see this guy publicly distance himself from me, throw me under the bus, then delete all my pictures, because that's the thing people also forget, because there wasn't evidence of it prior, because no one was basically archiving it. But Callan had loads of clips and pictures of him and D'Elia on his Instagram, and he deleted them all off the back of him getting off for Chris D'Elia get cancelled. And his reason for it at the time was his daughter was seeing all the comments or something, nonsense like that. It had nothing to do with him, but allegedly his daughter seeing comments on his Instagram forced him to delete all these pictures of his close friend. But really, he deleted them because he wanted to save himself. But then he ended up getting cancelled himself so if i was chris Talia, i would never talk to brian callan again but maybe that's why i don't have friends or maybe that's why that whole la friendship thing is a whole different world in itself because they kind of realize you know what i know what you had to do i know you had to, do to save your career i kind of get it it is what it is and they kept it brushed it off i'm just surprised honestly that they're actually friends really i'm surprised they're friends because if that was me and i was chris i would be so pissed like, you know what time I'm on. I know what time you're on. Why are you now trying to play fucking morality police and trying to be, you know, and trying to align yourself with the Me Too movement and shit when you know you have worse, if not comparable skeletons in your own flipping closet? I would have been so annoyed. But again, maybe I don't know absolutely anything. What are people saying in the chat? He's only funny when he's caught in a lie or goof or goofing on his co-hosts. Um, and who just says Chris and Brian were really funny on the fight companions a year and a half ago when Chris came out from hiding. Oh yeah, true, that was true. That was log. Yeah, that was actually a good one. Good point, Uche, actually. Yeah, they actually were. They actually did click on really well there. Um, I keep forgetting how many comedians did girl and guy code. Uh, Chris's no pain was his worst performance. I think one of them before no pain was good. Where Chris was competing with Fear with a fight belt was his best. Yeah, for sure. Crash ninety eight four. That period of that T Fat K belt and get pot, pot guess of the year thing when they were actually this is the thing as well by the way can we go back to a point in time where comedy podcasts were really funny when the hosts were going out of their way to try and make their guests laugh and the audience laugh also because that was the last kind of period of when the fire and the kid was actually funny when they had these guests of the year belts made up and they had people coming on the show knowing full well guest of the year was a thing and they wanted to win it they wanted to have the fans say yeah we really love this guy we really like this guy and whatnot so they'd go out of their way to when they come on the show on the podcast sorry to actually perform and play up to it and actually be funny and not sit there and flipping bloviate about fucking you know virology and world affairs and politics and stuff and start to you know tell you how to live your life and all that nonsense no they were just trying to be funny Let's go back to that point in time because to me, that was the greatest era 
But, you know, maybe eras end for the reason. And now you've got these comics talking about how many tickets they're selling, how great they're flipping, you know, um, tour was, what new Lambo truck they got. And you just sat there thinking, okay, I'm happy for you because I'm a fan, but maybe wrap it up. <laughs> maybe wrap it up. 